All right, right on folks, John Crane here and welcome to my shop. And today I'm going over hex keys. Now, a lot of you old timers might know these as Allen keys or Allen wrenches. And that's because in 1909, W.G. Allen filed for the patent for the hex head screw. So he popularized this type of screw and this type of wrench. Even though we know that these screws were being used as far back as 1860. Now, another big brand at the same time as Allen was Unbreco. You guys might know that brand. That means unbreakable. They came out with the wrenches and the screws as well. Now, the Allen brand name as of 2017 is no longer being manufactured. Uh, they were bought out by a company, Apex Tool. You can still buy the wrenches, but now they're stamping them with the brand name Crescent. All right, another very popular brand out there is the Bondis brand. Now I have quite a few sets of these Bondis hex keys in various forms from T-handles to folding sets to sets like this, but I really like this Bondis brand. And it was in 1964 that John Bondis came out with the ball and hex key. Not John Bonham from uh, Led Zeppelin kicking the drums there, but John Bondus came out with his ball and hex key. And this is great, as you guys know, for getting into these screws, you can get in at different angles, right? So a lot of why I'm talking about this today is because I just got this set of these metric T handle Bondus wrenches in the mail. I have a set of these fractional ones. And when a set like this comes into the shop, one of the big questions I ask myself, all right, now where is this going to live in the shop? As you guys can see, I'm into organization. And you know, there's a guy, Adam Savage, maybe you guys watch his channel, test it. But he is on the same wavelength that I am as far as organization in the shop. Now he has a term that he calls, uh, first order of retrievability. You know, that's kind of how fast you can grab a tool and I'm totally into that. Boy, I tell you, there's nothing worse than going to grab a tool and it's not there or digging through a drawer, trying to find the right one. You can't find it. You can't find that size. What a pain in the neck. So I thought that I'd like to build a rack for these. Now I know these come on a nice rack that they give you, but these racks don't quite fit into my shop layout. So I'm gonna build a rack that actually goes up here behind my milling machine. Let, let me show you where I'm gonna put these. All right, let's take a walk over to the bench and I'll show you where I'm gonna put these. Say a quick hello to uh, Jeremiah Johnson and Bear Claw. They're scouting out an elk right there. And, uh, Actually, there's me and my grandfather. Oh, you know what? I wanted to show you real quick a set of hex keys of his. These are these little stubby ones right here. Check out this old box. Actually, look this box up. I think it says something. It's hard to read this box, but it does say Mrs. McGregor's family nail box. So I think at one time this came full of nails. This is a really old box, but... My grandfather has this full of these little stubby Allen keys. And you can tell all his old wrenches are usually either Allen or Unbreco, but pretty cool to have these stubby ones. Check out this one here. He's even got this one ground down to get into some really tight spot. He worked for a Monroe calculator in Orange, New Jersey. Those are those old mechanical calculators. But anyway, on the subject of Allen keys, I thought I would show you guys that one. And again, here is my grandfather and me back in the day. So anyway, as far as placement of these T-handled Allen wrenches, we'll get back to that now. I was thinking I was gonna put them right here under this shelf and I could just be able to, you know, have some holes and some slots and I can pull these handles out right here, easy access. But I got my phone sitting right there. That's where I play my music from. This is a phone that just lives in the shop just to play music. This is actually a cool system as well. I got that magnet on the back. That's that night eyes. And this is just a, a metal knob here to stick that to a good little system. 
All right, but I'm not gonna put the wrenches there. I am gonna put the wrenches right here. I thought this might be a good spot. I do have this magnetic rack, but I think I don't use this as often enough. And I think this would be a great spot to build a rack to hold these T-handled hex wrenches. All right, here is the chicken scratch plan I came up with last night. At first it was gonna be plywood, and then I was thinking, oh, this would be great out of this PVC board. So the plan is to make it out of the PVC, put a series of holes all along here. And then I'm also gonna cut some dividers that go in between each of these handles. So when they get inserted, they don't twist back and forth. They kind of lock into their own spot. Obviously, the Bridgeport mill is a great tool for drilling these holes. And so what I did was I mapped out all the measurements so I can drill this with the aid of the digital readout. Now, obviously you can drill this with a cordless drill or on a drill press. I also put on here the correct size drill bit for the neck of these. These are obviously all different sizes. So I got the right size hole for the right hex key. Some of these aren't going down because of the vise, but all I need is to get a line right here. Yes. All right, now I've got the Grix pin nailer. I got some PVC cement. I'm just going to start nailing on these dividers. I cut a couple pieces here for the top of our house. And I cut these a little bit big because I wanna take a label maker and I wanna put labels above all these of what size wrench it is. That is key for figuring out, you know, what size wrench you wanna pull out. It's nice just to see it right on a label. Okay, I 
I also cut these little blocks at 10 degrees and these will go on the back just to give this a slight angle when I put this up on the bottom of that shelf. Okay, I decided just to shift this rack over a hair. All right, I'm thinking something like right here. <laughs> Looks pretty good. All right, looking pretty slick. I know this rises above the shelf a little bit, but I can still get those boxes out. All right, time to test it out and see how we did. Uh-oh. <laughs> Looks like we need a little bit more angle to keep that in there. All right. All right, take two steeper angle. Alright, pretty cool. Take two, let's see how they fit now. Much, much better. Much, much better. Nice. <laughs> All right, there we go, folks. Look at that. That is deluxe. I am super excited to have this rack in the shop. First order of retrievability. Nice and easy. Come here, grab the Allen key. All right, right on, folks. I think this rack turned out super deluxe. You know, as far as first order of retrievability, being able to grab a tool quickly and use it, I think I got that going on with this rack. I tell you, anything I can do here in the shop to improve workflow, to improve productivity, and mostly to improve my peace of mind. You know, there's nothing worse than getting interrupted in a creative workflow. You're into the project. Next thing you know, you're hunting around for a tool. You go into the store, you, know, you gotta buy a new one, something like that. If I can improve my organization in the shop, I will do it. There's a lot of those projects that come up in this shop and I'm gonna share those with you guys. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. I hope you guys are doing great. Please like, subscribe, share this with your buddies. All right, I'll see you all soon. Right on. Mrs. McGregor's Family Nail Box. 